Welcome to Dallas Sports Fanatic. I'm your host, Stephanie Yodi. And at this point in the season, the Mavericks' main goal is to test out their youngest players to see which of them can really play. Winning is not a priority, but putting players in difficult situations to see how they respond is. The Mavericks have benefited greatly from two-way contracts this season from the Texas Legends, led by Coach Bob McKinnon, who leads the league in NBA call-ups. This season alone, six Legends players appeared in NBA games, including Antonius Cleveland, whose time was cut short due to injury, but Kyle Collinsworth signed as a Dallas Maverick just before the All-Star break, as well as two-way contracts to Jonathan Motley, Jalen Jones, Jameel Warney, and Wade Baldwin to the Portland Trailblazers. These transactions were managed so seamlessly because McKinnon bought into the Mavs system, so the Legends run virtually the same offense as Rick Carlisle's Mavericks, making the leap from the G League to the NBA much easier. One of the many Mavericks vying for consideration for spots on the team next season is Jonathan Motley. He certainly gained the coaching staff's attention during his time with the Mavericks, and a great amount coming from owner Mark Cuban, who's tweeted his praises at the rookie and even called him Carl Motlone after his 26-point game against the Detroit Pistons, referring to Utah Jazz Hall of Famer Carl Malone. Ironically, last year at Baylor, Motley won the Carl Malone Award, which was presented to the best power forward in college basketball. McKinnon has been extremely happy with Motley's progress over the course of the season, saying that not only the numbers that he's putting up, but he's getting better at the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. His pick and roll defense, his understanding of where to be, weak side help situations, and being able to be more vocal on the court. All right, well, Motley, Legends made it to playoffs. What were your initial thoughts? Because you made such a contribution with that team, and they made it to playoffs. How does it feel to, you know, be a part of that? Oh, man, it, it was great. Uh, I was happy for them when they made it. I know they haven't made it in a long time, but uh, it was just a great accomplishment, and I'm glad I got to be a part of it. We've talked a lot about it before, but now that the season's coming to an end, how do you see that your development happened from the G League to the NBA and over the course of the season? Uh, man, I feel like I got a lot better, uh, just improving my outside shot, uh, balance, core strength, just different things like that. Uh, um, I'm just progressing every day, trying to make sure my outside shot gets more and more consistent. Kyle Collinsworth looks to make a name for himself with these last few games of the season to secure a guaranteed contract for next season. Nicknamed the Triple Double King in the NCAA during his time with BYU, Kyle credits his transition as a G League player to an NBA player not only from the hard work and versatility, but from visualizing his goals and translating them into practice. That's why the mental preparation is key for him staying ready. And when evaluating the difference between the G League and the NBA, Kyle says it's more than just speed and athleticism. The biggest difference is the IQ level of these players. He says everyone is so smart on the court, and you make one little mistake and they make you pay for it. I recently asked Kyle about his contributions to the historical season of the Texas Legends, as well as his plans for the developing into his role as an NBA player this upcoming offseason. Kyle, a lot of development this season. Started out with the Texas Legends and now with the Dallas Mavericks. How would you sum up your season as a whole? I think just from the summer, all the hard work I put in and then being in a great system with Coach Mack who puts all of us in a great spot to succeed and you know to get call-ups. So I was resilient. I just kept working hard through the ups and downs of the G League and you know I got my shot and I took advantage of it. You were part of a, a big season for the Texas Legends, and they made it to playoffs. How does it feel to have that contribution and how you're bringing it to the Dallas Mavericks? I mean, it was great. I was there the year before where we didn't make the playoffs and we lost more games than we won, so it was cool to see us, you know, flip it around and make the playoffs and those guys, you know. So it just tributes to a lot of hard work from players' standpoint and coaching standpoint, so it was cool to see it all, you know, fold out. Now, off season's coming up. What are you going to focus on with your time off? I just keep getting better. You know, I made a huge jump uh, from last year to this year, and I plan to make another huge jump and just working on, you know, every part of my game. You know, so I'm excited for it. Mavericks analyst Jeff Skin Wade here. Now, Motley came into the Dallas Mavericks, and he's quite a versatile player. Even Mike Fisher called him a hybrid five. What are your thoughts on his role with the Mavericks? Well, I think the thing that's interesting about Jonathan is every NBA team needs a player like that. You know, the modern big is more of a floor spacer and athletic rim runner. Motley's more of a throwback, and I think that's why Fish is calling him a hybrid five. But the thing about Motley is you have to have a big guy that can hold position for the times you do play traditional centers. I think the real key moment for him in his stint with the Mavs is hitting that you know, three-point jumper to put it into overtime 
people didn't know he could do that. I know Coach McKinnon with the Legends has worked tireless, uh, tirelessly with with the guys to increase their range. If Jonathan can extend his range and still be that bruising interior presence, there's no doubt he's an NBA player. That's right. He's great under the post, and he can make some quite game-like plays with some of the dunks he's done. What does it take for him to get an NBA contract next season? I think really just persistence. I mean, coming out of Baylor, people thought he would be a first-round pick, and then he had the injury. So I think he's already on team's radars. I think he's his work ethic is strong. I think he plays hard. I mean, you know, the best way to put it, and I said this, every team needs a player like Motley. So if he shows that he can be versatile, he can be an interior player, he's got good size, he can rebound and do these things, do things around the bucket, but then not be a hindrance out in space – There's zero doubt. I mean, I think he'll be on an NBA roster. I think the reason the Mavericks gave him one of their two-way contracts is they see him as an NBA player. That's right. Now, one of the players also with the Legends now with the Mavericks is Kyle Collinsworth. He had the nickname Mr. Triple Double in college. What do you think of him getting that nickname in the NBA? Well, he's going to have to fix his jumper. He, he's one of these guys that you watch him. There was stretches this year, especially when Wesley went down for the Mavericks, where I said, man, that's our best perimeter defender right there. He's a great defender. He's got really good size. It's important for perimeter players in the NBA to have size and strength because they do get switched off on bigger players a lot on pick and roll stuff. Kyle has shown that he can hold his position and really fight. He's got to be able to knock down the jumper. That's the clear hurdle for him to be a long-term NBA player. If he does that... Yes, then he can be Mr. Triple Double. Yeah, I think he's got the NCAA record for triple doubles when he was at BYU, but he's got great vision. He's a good rebounder. Uh, coaches love it in the modern NBA when a guard can get a rebound because your fast break starts immediately. It's not a big passing to somebody, it's a push. So he helps your transition game. Next step, make that jumper consistent. He's got a spot in the NBA. Now we also have Jalen Jones on the two way. He came from New Orleans. Going back and forth with the G League there, comes to Dallas, he can kind of just jump in and take over any role. What would you define his role with the Mavericks? Well, I think, you know, they tried to bring him in here as a potential wing-type player. I think, for example, if Dorian had been healthy all year long, that that spot is not really open for Jalen to come in. Jalen, you know, when we talk about Kyle, for example, or, or we talk about Motley, they have these definitive things that stand out. Jalen's a great athlete, but there's a lot of guys his size that are great athletes. He's going to have to turn himself into either an elite outside shooter or just a complete lockdown defender, have a specific skill set, that that he can hang his hat on and go every team needs this like Dorian for example with the Mavs Dorian came in as an undrafted guy and they're like hey lockdown defender he started working on his three if Jalen shows it he makes it impossible to score on him or he shows that he is a completely reliable shooter then there is a place for him in the NBA now we got one more game left of the season for the Mavericks they're looking to develop their roster Mm -hmm. as you look at the legends and the depth of their uh their organization what are your expectations for this upcoming offseason? What moves will be made? And who should we be lo- on the lookout for? Well, I think, you know, if you're talking about legends, guys, it could be coming back to the Mavs. I really like Warney. Mm-hmm. And the thing I like about him, I know a lot of people like to do the Dewan Blair comparison. I think he's a better, he's a little bit bigger uh, than Dewan, but he just plays with NBA swagger. He plays like he belongs. I was really, I think, you know, when the Mavericks brought in Harrison, he's been good, but I was surprised that Warney didn't get that second 10-day contract. I'm a fan. If uh, my uh, opinion matters, yes, I would bring Warney back. I think uh, I think he's a valuable end-of-the-bench type guy. Uh, so I think when I look at what the Legends had, I think he's a guy that, that translates to the NBA. I'd be shocked if, if Motley wasn't on an NBA roster, preferably the Dallas Mavericks uh, next year. And I, and I think, you know, it's going to be tough for a guy like Kyle uh, to stick unless he comes back after the summer. You know, summer league's going to be huge for him. Mm-hmm. If he comes back and he's knocking down jumpers, then I think he's in somewhere. But I think all those guys have games that translate to the NBA. Jalen, big season for you, starting out with the Legends, coming up with the Mavericks. How does it feel to be part of such a big season for the Legends, having the most wins all season, making it to playoffs? And you were a big part of that. Uh, it was an honor, you know, uh, Going down, playing with the legends, um, with Coach Bob and all the other players that played, it was good. You know, we learned a lot, um, won a lot of games together, and uh, uh, I was mad that, you know, we fell short in the playoffs. Now, Coach Bob McKinnon was saying that when he brought you into the G League, that you were focusing on your position and how it was going to change when it goes into the NBA. How have you worked on that, and now that you're with the Mavericks, how has it developed? 
Uh, just taking it step by step, day by day. Um, when I was with the Legends a lot, you know, I did a lot of just a lot of guard stuff. You know, always ball handling, come off screens, a lot of pick and roll actions. And uh, we got a lot of shots up as well. So, I mean, I was never inside at all. And uh, my, sh my jump shot developed uh, a lot more when I uh, was with the Legends. Yeah, I mean, you started out with New Orleans, came to the Legends and now with Mavericks. Going through all that adversity, how has that helped you evolve as a player? Uh, just made me more mentally tough. You know, when I was in New Orleans, I was going back and forth to Greensboro to New Orleans. So, you know, that was a crazy situation. And then next thing you know, I was with the Legends and the Mavericks. So, I mean, it's just been a roller coaster. But, you know, I've enjoyed the process and, you know, just took it day by day and just tried to learn. A few more games left of season. What are your off-season plans? Uh, probably you know, take a little break, you know, a few days, just, you know, recover from the season and then, you know, back at it, um, just in the gym and, you know, hang with a couple of friends and just take it from there. Two-way player Wade Baldwin has been making his appearance known, leading the Portland Trailblazers with 14 points Thursday night against the Houston Rockets in place of Damian Lillard, who was out with an ankle injury. The All-Star credited Baldwin on his performance, saying that he is impacting the game on a playoff level. Quite the compliment from his all-star teammate, and their coach Terry Stotts agrees, describing Baldwin's late-season contributions as exceptional. His defensive emergence can greatly benefit the team as they head into playoffs, ranking third in the Western Conference. But Wade says he's always been a defensive player. It's just this season he's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. He was a first-round pick, converted to a player. He says, I strive to be the hungriest person in the NBA and build my brand back up. His defense is my ticket. Every time I get down on the court, that's my calling card. And if my name is going to be called, I'm going to bring that intensity every time I play. Wade had the chance to catch up with his Legends 2A teammates when he returned to Texas Tuesday night to face the Dallas Mavericks. I also caught up with Wade, and he filled me in on how he is developing his role in Portland with the Trailblazers. You know, just opportunity to play with Portland. It's my first time, really. Uh, show them what I can do and, you know, hopefully uh, get wrapped up with, with them for next season. So you made a big contribution to a team that made playoffs, but how would you say your role has changed from the G League to the Trailblazers now? Uh, everything with the G League was all game stuff, what I need to do there, and here it's how, how well my workouts are, pre-game warm-ups, uh, what type of team I am. So a lot of the smaller scale stuff um, is what I have to incorporate here with Portland.